yes, so honestly, we are the Church of Venus. And to confirm, we want to invite people to testify about God's victory. Yuri and Alexei, welcome them, please. Good morning, dear Church, new Embassy of God Church, and I want to congratulate everyone on this anniversary, on this celebration. Let's give great all glory to God. And I represent our family, Kalinichuk. I represent uh, my wife and my three children. They couldn't be here, but my testimony is that I was, for, I was uh, 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 drug addicted together with my wife we are drug addicts and uh, we were doing drugs during 10 years and uh, uh, my wife giving birth to our first child still she was doing drugs but god was alive and our children are healthy our children are very active they're the most active in our school and uh, teachers always say that they are great they are good and at that time when I repented, I went through the rehabilitation center, and I also served during three years. I, I've been serving in the rehabilitation center. I understood that God wants me to devote my life to our country, to our society. I knew that I want to do something for our uh, people, for our society, for our country. And it was time. You know, I. Yeah, I decided to be very active, and I heard some words of one preacher. He said that you need to, to take responsibility for your house, for your, uh, for your, uh, for your house at first, for your family, and God will give you the whole city. And thanks God for for Pastor Sunday, who always encouraged us to move forward, to take responsibility, to spread the kingdom of God. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is, our work or our family or anything, the place where we are. And thanks to preaching and teaching of Pastor Sunday, now I'm the head of the social organization, a moral codex. Uh, the main idea, the main goal is to, uh, to change and to bring moral values to all the spheres of our societies, especially to the politics. And because of the vision of the Embassy of God Church, I am the member of, the, of a social uh, lobby in uh, a Kiev administration and also I'm an assistant uh, um, in one of the region of Kiev and uh, all glory uh, is to our God and to Pastor Sunday and to that vision that we have in our church. Hallelujah! Let's give all glory to God for this great testimony. I'm the pastor of the church, and I want to confirm that uh, this family is a really blessed one. They were drug addicted, and nowadays uh, there are two ministers, and Yuri solves a lot of problems. Uh, it uh, solves problems in different uh, in different spheres, and he's a key person in social organization. So God is alive and uh, the kingdom of God is spreading. God is alive. Hallelujah. Hello, church. Hello, dear guests. I want to congratulate you on this celebration, on, on this 18th anniversary. And I have such a testimony. I am former drug addicted. I am 35 years old and 15 years among these. Uh, I was doing drugs for 15 years. When I was 15, drugs came into my life. And at that time, uh, you know, doing that uh, drugs, heroin, and smoking was very cool. And uh, as uh, other my friends, uh, I started to do this. And when I was 19, I went to the military service. I thought that maybe I would be able to drop it, to stop doing this, but drugs were also there. And, uh, uh, you know, all the military servants uh, knew that we were doing drugs, but they couldn't do anything. 
they uh, uh, scared us, they, uh, they frightened us, but nothing could help us, nothing could change. After the military service, I understood that uh, to work and to do drugs uh, I <laughs> can't be connected. So I decided to, I was a thief uh, to have money. I, uh, I was a thief and in 2001, first of all, I was judged and uh, I was in prison for one year, and the first day when I went away from the prison, I went and again I used drugs, and everything started from the very beginning. So my life uh, was destroyed, and uh, my uh, uh, was destroyed, and my parents didn't know what to do, and uh, my brother didn't want me to see. He said that I don't want my son to see you and to see your life. And when I was 30, I came to the Rehabilitation Center Love. I went through this rehabilitation, and during five years, I, I'm not doing drugs. I am free, and I am the a leader of, and the head of the uh, social organization Life is, your, uh, Life is in Your Hands. And uh, thanks to Joshua Bible School, um, I rule, uh, um, I rule, and I run my social organization, and I study. I'm the third year of studying, and I want to thank Pastor Sunday, Pastor Madhuri Aksana Viktorovna, every each pastor of the Embassy of God Church, each leader who helped me. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, I have a new life. Hallelujah. Good morning, dear church. I congratulate you on this celebration on the 18th of anniversary. My name is Vitaly. I'm the pastor uh, in Nikolaev, a city in, in Ukraine. And I can confirm the words of Alexei, who said that uh, now he has a future. Now he has goals. Now he has tasks. Because I know him. During three years, we were on a mission. and. Uh, we were doing what he said, what he testified right now. That is why I can confirm that uh, um, glory of God, grace of God is in his life. Church, give all glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, we would like to invite onto this stage our guests from Estonia. Let us show our hospitability to these people. Let us greet him. Loud applause for our guests. It is impossible to have a holiday without guests. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, dear church. We have a congratulation uh, from Estonia, God Embassy Church there. God Embassy Church has just uh, been born there thanks to this uh, person, so she will congratulate us on this great holiday. Hallelujah. I congratulate you on this holiday and thank you, Pastor Sandy Adelaja, Pastor Boss, and Pastor Yulia Bilausova. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you. We are thankful to you that you've come here to congratulate us. Thank you very much. Present him, but I will do it myself. Pastor Topper will preach today. Pastor Topper is the elders, uh, is the elder of our church. He's the one uh, we, uh, from whom I can, I can learn to be humble, to be novel, and to be the image of Jesus. Because the better image of Jesus is, uh, can be, you know, it's very difficult to find, especially at least in the Embassy of God Church. And we haven't heard him for a long time. He uh, hasn't had an opportunity to preach, but praise the Lord that he has an opportunity, such opportunity to serve us. He's a unique person. He leads the church in Frankfurt, and he leads the Bible school in Germany. And uh, there is a lot what we can take from him. 
He has a very nice family, a very nice wife, and very good, and nice children. And I want us, I want us to find our places, to see, to to take our seats, and not just to listen to the word, but for us to receive, to make a decision that whatever the word he gives. For my sight, I will do everything to be, to be, and to fulfill this word, to receive this word, and not just to receive it, but to use this word, to make this word our flesh, to make this word a flesh. How do we call it? It's not just an entertaining, and I won't just receive it as entertaining. But I want to to be active. I want to be a doer. I want to do something. And the question that we need to ask ourselves: uh, Do I live in such way? Do I behave according to what he's preaching? And at the same time, we need to make a decision that I will do this or that. I won't do this or that. But I will um, I will act according to this word. So it should be practical approach. He is one of the best preachers and uh, one of the best uh, uh, men of God. So Pastor Topa, honor you. Loud applause. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for your church that you are building. Thank you that your church is moving forward. Lord, you are the one who was faithful in the past. You are the God who gave us victories in the past. In you we believe. And nowadays, we believe that you also will continue to bless us so that to give us victories. And at this time, at present, we accept victories from you as well in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. You can praise the Lord. Pastor introduced me in such a way that I was uh, trying to humble myself. I greet all the guests, great men of God, and also all the members of the church. I congratulate you all on our 18th anniversary. My family is coming today and I hope in the evening ministry they will in the evening service they will be as well so they say hi to you as well. I would like to thankful to thank uh, my spiritual parents Pastor Boyce and Pastor Sunday thank you for for what you gave me. I was thinking about it and I remember my first preachings on the stage, on the stage of our church and I remember as my knees were trembling and I was trying to hide myself behind this table so that no one could see my knees. And today I'm standing behind this pulpit and I, my knees are not trembling. Thank you for everything. Thank you for what you've put into me. And I believe that you will have a reward for what you do. And Pastor Sunday 
says that he learns from me some things, but I don't know what he can take from me. God gave me the word, and this word is called in such a way, why enemies? This is the topic of our service, why enemies? You know, God knows everything. God knows what people are talking about, and I think that God wanted to make some things clear. So Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, from verse 33 to 41. It is written like this there. Jesus used many similar stories and illustrations to teach the people as much as they could understand. In fact, in his public ministry, he never taught without using parables. But afterward, when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything to them. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat, with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may your word today be as the fire that takes away all the things that are not needed, that takes away all the things of devil. May it be like a milk that breaks all the stones like it may your word be like a water that cleanse us from dirt may your word be like spirit that brings the life that that makes us be able to do what we hear may your word be like the word that makes operations in our bodies and flesh bring bringing heal bringing healing and I thank you for everything in the name of Jesus Christ amen so why enemies you know my dear there is something in the list of prayers of people which is not popular there are not many people who ask enemies and uh, many enemies I think that you will rarely hear such a prayer to God but we understand that if there is something that is popular on this earth this is the enemies because you know when I'm speaking about enemies I'm not speaking about people only I'm speaking about different problems circumstances and also about people as well because when devil fell concerning the revelation chapter 50 I saw that Satan who fell so after that time we have enemies on the earth as God started to have it on heaven such a way we have it on earth so my dear When I'm speaking about enemies, I'm not speaking about people only. I'm speaking about circumstances as well. So I ask you not to think only about your mother-in-law or someone else. 
I want you to think about problems and circumstances. You know, actually, to be enemies like people are usually, when people usually have enemies, this is the lowest level of relationships. The highest law is to love God and to love people who are close to you. This is the highest level of relationships. And people of the high rank, they live according to this law. So this is the law of love. This is the law of kings. People with uh, the mentality of king, of kingdom, they live according to this law. They can't allow to themselves to hate people or to think badly about other people. So today we are talking why enemies? So if it is something widespread and if many people can have it for such a cheap price, why why still we don't use this? Why people try to get rid of this? I remember the time when we had the first persecutions in our church, one of the prayers when, when we were praying Actually, I was praying about this. God, please take away these enemies, destroy them, do something so that we do not have them. And I remember once at night prayer, pastor came to us and he said, you know, I want to tell you from this day up, don't pray Said God set you free from enemies. I want you to start pray, praying may these enemies be in my life till that time you finish what you want so it's like another approach why because there is an understanding why we have enemies so my dear friends when god allows and when many of us don't want this but god allows this allows enemies be in our life you know, there are many people who think, why this church has so many enemies? Why uh, do so many people hate them? Beha perhaps they do something bad. Because, of course, people will not hate them just for nothing. Of course, you know, I'm joking. If you're going to the shop and you stole the... Uh, sausage everyone wants to kill you but when you did nothing and everyone hates you so you know it is not necessarily that the person should make a scene so that everyone hated h this person in such a way Jesus uh, could be thought like uh, the person who made many sins because many people hated them, him. But he did nothing. He committed no sin. So if we are, as a church, we try to do so many good things for God, why so many people hate us? So what are the reasons why God allows enemies be in our life? So... As turning back to the mark, when Jesus was dis with his disciples, when Jesus was in the boat, a great wind, wind started to blow. So if Jesus was in the boat, Godfather, he could stop that wind. He could saw that wind before it started to blow. He could, so, he could see that wind before the waves come up, came up to the boat. He could see everything before this wind, before these waves, but still Father didn't stop. So it happened because of the reason. Don't you think that God Father didn't th see, see this? He saw everything. He saw everything before the wind, before the waves. He saw everything. When problems started in church, he saw everything, but still he allowed this happen. Why did he do this? There are some concrete reasons. So first reason, I would like to give you 11 points why God allows us to have enemies. So why enemies? The reason number one, the Bible says, 
The disciple is not higher than his teacher. The disciple is not higher than his teacher. If Godfather had enemies, then son cannot be higher than his father. So he as a son will also have enemies. And we as disciples of Jesus Christ, we already inherited his enemies. We cannot take the blessings from teacher, but deny the enemies of the teacher. If we deny, we reject to take part in the sufferings of our teacher, of Jesus, in such a way we say that we are better than him. Look, even in church, when I deny to take part in the sufferings, in take, to take part in the problems of my teacher, it means that in such a way I say that I'm higher than him. So sometimes as a Christians, we do some things and we don't even realize what we do. Because pride, we think that we should walk like proud people and not care about this. But this is the pride when we do not want to accept enemies. Or when, for example, someone is against the church, and we start to go to the restaurant with these people who are against. It means that we say that I am higher than my teacher. And then if you think like this, you have to be put onto the place of your teacher and we will see how would you behave. So why enemies? Why does God allow enemies to be in our lives? It is first of all to understand that we are not higher than our teacher. This is the lesson for us. We should understand that we are not higher than our teacher. It will give us an opportunity. It will give us strength to overcome all the difficulties. You know, Jesus had many enemies. What enemies did he have? First, it was the person who wanted to kill him when he was just born. And as, as in the church, there are many businessmen, social doers. No matter what status you have in church, every of us will have to face such enemies. Every of us will have to face the enemy that Jesus had. The Herod wanted to kill Jesus when he even did, didn't do anything. So very often it happens in our lives. We try to reach something great. We try to succeed in something. But there will always be Herods. Who, uh, there will be people with this spirit of Herod who will try to influence you in a bad way. And you will have to know that this is the time when you should not be humble, but the time when you have to stand against these people. I remember when the church just started and pastors said that I will have a great church. I will have many thousands of people in this. And there were many people who told that Young man, where did you come from? What do you want to tell us? We don't believe you. In such a way, the spirit of Herod works. And we all have faced this Herod because the disciple is not higher than the teacher say this. Of course, Herod or people like Herod, these are people who, when they have a position, they don't let other people to stand on their position. Herod thought that there could be no any king like him, and he perhaps thought that he will live uh, forever. And when he was said that the king was born, he couldn't stand this. So the spirit of Herod works in such a way that it doesn't want to let people 
be higher than you, than they. Very often, we will ha very often we have to face such people, and we will continue to face such people in our lives, and we should be brave enough to stand against these people, to fight with these people. So this spirit, it works in such a way that it warns all the people around be small and only the people with the spirit of Herod want to be great and no one greater than them. Jesus hated this spirit of Herod and he tried to stop it. But that spirit couldn't stop Jesus and it will not stop us as well in the name of Jesus. Also, other enemies, there were Pharisees. And we will all have to face Pharisees and Sadducees these people are those who hate everything new. They want everything be as it was before, as it was in usual way. Every time when we come to the anniversary, we have something great, something new. We have new projects. Now we are building a temple, a, a house, and we are happy for the new building. Yes, let's be happy. God is the God of progress. But Pharisees and Sadducees, they hate progress. We have educational retreats. We have many new projects, leadership works, home group of pastor. We have different uh, social councils and so on. And we have to be happy that we have these new projects. But the spirit of Pharisees and Sadducees will stand against this. And the people with this spirit, they stand against new projects. Thank God that we are the people who accept new things and may be this always with us in the name of Jesus Christ. The next enemies is Judah. Judah is a betrayer. Either you want this or not, we will have people who will betray us. We had these people before and we will continue to have them. Don't be afraid of betrayers. Let it not stop us. Never say that I will not work with people because they will betray me. I will not open to people because they will betray me. No, these enemies existed and they will continue to exist. Not because God uh, wants them be like this. And about Jesus, about Judah, Jesus said that it was better for him not to be born because it was not his calling. Because if it was his calling, then God would not say this about him. But the fact is, as if Judah was one of his enemies, we will also have such Judas in our lives. So the thing that we have such Judas in our lives, the thing that we have such betrayers, it's okay because our teacher had such betrayers in his life. And also other enemies, these are people of in our homes in Matthew 13:57 you can read it at home it was written that Jesus couldn't do much in his uh, native land because of what because uh, people didn't believe him because they knew him and he said himself that there are no prophecies in their homes enemies sometimes are people who are with you in your native land, in your home. Why? Because people are proud sometimes and we will have it as well. 
we will also have such enemies. Even if we look at this uh, hall, we will see that there are many people who came here from other towns than uh, Kievans. Why? Because of this principle, and we also have to stand against this. Next reason, why enemies? Why enemies? The second reason. So the first reason I told you that because the disciple can't be higher than a teacher. And the second reason is enemies give us the highest opportunity to feel the highest God's blessings. So they give us opportunities to feel uh, and to have the highest God's blessing. Let's read uh, the uh, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. Chapter 5. And when we read uh, Matthew, chapter 5, you will see such things. It is written there. It is speaking about blessing. I will, I will read uh, uh, verse 11 and 12. It is written, God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. What Jesus said to do, be happy about it and be very glad and be very glad be happy and be very glad for a great reward waits you in heaven and remember the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way so what should what should the embassy of god church do we need to be happy and to be glad when especially when 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 god gives a car when god gives a house when God heals us, when when should we be happy and glad? When we are persecuted. But what some people do? We can see that pastor is champing and we think, what is happening with him? How can he do this? Because he understood something. We need to be happy and to be glad. Let's rejoice to God. Let's rejoice to God with a voice of joy. Glory be to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for this pressure. Thank you. Listen. Persecute. Jesus said, when you are persecuted because of me, then be happy and be glad. You know, most of all, believers all over the world, they are happy because they got, for example, a new house or a new car. And we testify, we are so happy, hallelujah. But when there are persecutes, Lord, we always say, why me? Why our church? Are we the only one? Are we the only ones? Do something. Yes, we need to pray, but differently. We will speak uh, later. But when we focus on that reward, when God, when God gives these enemies, when He allows these enemies, it means that it is, it is a hint for us that we have already earned something. Maybe. We don't know. Who knows? Who knows? The devil thought that something will happen maybe maybe he uh, he doesn't know the plans of god but he thinks that i will do something for for them to be destroyed so that they couldn't receive that reward i uh, uh, i remember such a story i'm not sure whether it is true or not but i remember that there was one woman she uh, she did all the uh, um, hard work she cleaned and so on and when the king heard uh, about her and he prepared a reward for her uh, she uh, he 
hided that uh, that uh, reward at her place but she didn't came to that play to to work because she was upset she said okay i'm fed up with this i can't do, th do this anymore i always help them but they always humiliate me so i don't want to go there but listen the embassy of god church be happy and be glad and be prepared for that reward hallelujah so the gave us our enemies give us the highest opportunity so god opens up some opportunities through all these circumstances he gives us opportunity through them and people who have eyes and ears they can see this these opportunities it is not time to sit aside to uh, to be aside and wait until everything will finish you will miss something. Even there was a research, and I read one research, and scientists said that uh, the uh, uh, greatest uh, and the biggest companies were formed uh, at the time of the uh, most difficult crisis. Even in the physical world, not speaking about the kingdom of God, these laws work. So those who were standing with that wind, I congratulate you. That is why apostles were happy when they were beaten. They were happy and they were glad because they looked at reward. Let's focus our sight, not at what is happening, but on that reward that God has prepared and say, Lord, I won't miss this reward. I won't miss this, these blessings that you've prepared for this church. Raise up your hand and ask, Lord, I won't miss. I won't miss. You have a reward for us. You have this reward that you give us. And Lord, help each of us not to miss his or her reward in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the third reason why God allows uh, enemies, why enemies? You know, enemies are one of, of the biggest symbol of our absolute devotion to God. It is Mark 10, Mark 10, 28. Enemies are, uh, are the symbol of our devotion to God. It is written, those who leave their, their uh, father or mother and they will receive the reward. How how? It is not written about the chocolate. I said the chocolate, you will receive chocolate, but you will receive persecutes. So the more you are persecuted, the, the more you are coming to Jesus, the more you are coming, you, the closer you are coming to Jesus, the, uh, um, the better position you have. I think that why enemies? Enemies are as the uh, uh, are as some medicine that help us to be balanced. What do I mean? In the old covenant, people uh, people eat uh, some medicine with meat so that they could uh, that they could eat and it would be easier for their health. And uh, God said that you will receive everything uh, together with persecutes. Why? Because it's better for your health. So that your blessings won't come into your head. Apostle Paul said that 
uh, it was the angel of Satan to persecute and uh, he prayed for three, uh, three times that Lord take it away but God didn't take it and Apostle Paul in uh, uh, other uh, scripture said that there were such revelations that God gave me this angel of Satan. He gave me all, the, all that persecutes for me not to be proud because of all that revelations and because of all that blessings. That is why he writes in other scriptures that I boast of not my revelations, but I boast of all the problems, all I went through, because it is what give me, gives me to be balanced. So when our people started to become multimillionaires three years ago, someone told me, you know, Pastor, when I when I come to the preaching, I uh, don't listen to the preaching, but I look at my uh, at my watch for me uh, to be able after finishing to be able to go to the restaurant. So I remember when earlier we just came we, when we didn't have money, we didn't even have watch to look at, but now when we when we are multimillionaires, now we have uh, very rich watches and so on so thanks God for all that problems for that balance that we have next reason why enemies of course it's understandable that God when when there are problems we are seeking God more usual people are seeking God more when they have such difficult circumstances we shouldn't wait until the problem will come. For us to seek God, to be closer to Him, it should be normal for us as believers. So we don't wait uh, until problems, but we are seeking these problems. We need to, uh, to put new, new goals that are higher than we are, that uh, uh, make us humble and seek God, because we understand that without Him, we won't be able to do this. But if we don't seek, and because of that love of God to us, He will give us enemies who will bring us to God. You can take as a background John 8, 4, where it is written about a woman the woman was brought to to Jesus. So her enemies brought her to, to the feet of Jesus. It's so great when problems can bring us to to feet of God. Next reason. Why enemies? Enemies? Why enemies? Because according to the wisdom of God, it is uh, enemies are God's uh, resources. I I call it like this. Enemies are God's resources. And as a background, I take the life of Apostle Paul. In chapter 23 of Acts, it is written that he had to go to Rome and to testify. But who knows that Apostle Paul uh, didn't have to pay for, for the ticket because uh, his enemies put him uh, put him there to Rome his enemies put him brought him to the king's uh, uh, to the king's house and he testified there and uh, they can't say they couldn't say that they didn't hear uh, the gospel so look how many years we tried to go to television to newspapers but now for free everywhere we are advertised everywhere for free you said that it is bad news they they are speaking about about us bad things but what's the reason they know about us everyone knows about us and everybody knows that we are with jesus so if they know about this then they've heard about jesus give all glory to god it is just god's wisdom we think we think that, oh, if I have money, I will do this or that. I need to save money, and then uh, I will give. Why enemies? 
the uh, uh, the, uh, the Kings Gospel Kings three one. It is written that God left some countries, so enemies, to temptate Israel people for them to know to know the art of war. So God wants to teach us the art of war. Jesus put us as army. We need to be a strong army and we need to be trained somehow. That is why enemies, each of us, what is David without a lion? David couldn't be David without fighting with all that enemies. No way. And his enemies uh, b b helped him to become who he was because he was brave and he stand against them. Imagine who of you want, for example, Klitschko to present you his, uh, um, his belt of a champion of champion of the world, only one person. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because as soon uh, as soon as he invites you his belt, all his enemies will come to you. And they will say that I, if you are a champion of the world, then I want to fight with you. And you know, everyone will know about this all TV will speak about this and all his enemies will come to you to fight and they will want to fight and you will say that oh my god maybe I made a mistake no so all that pain that we have uh, they help us uh, to confirm us to be champions that is why we need to have enemies who is David without Goliath hallelujah Who is Pastor Trohin? Who is Pastor Trohin? And he got an re a reward, yes? Okay, but if he didn't go against them, against all the criminals, all against all that drug addiction, so what, what would happen? But now he's everywhere on TV. So tell with me, thanks God for enemies. So my dear, each of us should have should face uh, uh, our enemies, and we need to conquer them. Of course, it's very nice if we can hide uh, um, behind Pastor Sunday, so he goes forward, and uh, we have our territory. But you know, each of us has to face their their enemies, and through that uh, situations, you will be great. Okay, I will finish up. Why enemies? Because uh, each uh, building will be tempted, will be tested. Each building will be tested. Disciples of Jesus. It is Mark uh, chapter 4. There we saw that uh, Jesus taught them and preached them all the day, but the same day in the evening. He fell. F he went to sleep on purpose. They didn't understand that it was a test. They listened to the. They listened to him, but they didn't hear him. But and it is written that that he went to the boat and he went to sleep, but they didn't understand. They were waiting for him. They uh, wanted him to to make them free. They wanted him to teach what uh, wanted him to teach them what to do, but exams are not to kill us, but to understand all, uh, what kind of students we are. So all that exams that we have give us understanding. Uh, how much do you understand about your subject? And thanks to our church, we had to pass this exam. I think. I think that we uh, passed that exam for 50 percent. I think like this. Why? Because we are standing. Some people laughed, 
That is why I said that maybe we passed for 50%, but it gives us an opportunity to look deeply because earlier I thought that our people are the best people and I think the same way now. I think that our church is the best church, our missionaries are the best ones, but I understood that I need to work upon myself and I understood that there is something that I need to work upon. So all that educational retreats, if you don't attend that educational retreats, if you don't go to your personal retreats, if you don't try to come to the home groups of Pastor Sunday, if you don't uh, pa take part in all that uh, events, then you make a great evil to yourself. Why? Because there will be next exam. That is why everything we have now, it is an opportunity. So enemies, uh, our opportunities to look upon ourselves and to work upon ourselves. So what should we do when we have enemies? It's not time to hide. It's not time to run away. When enemies, it's not time to, uh, to give up. No, it is time to fight, to be in this war. And it is written in the Bible that I gave you all that prophets for you to be able to fight, to do uh, to do some good actions and listen to me I know people who left because of that problems and they had visions about our church they uh, that there will be time when when and there will be uh, there will be a lot of so businesses and you know we will uh, go all around the world we will have everything there will be such a craze there will be a lot of healings but they're not here why because there was a strong wind there were enemies and they thought maybe uh, someone pastor sunday did something wrong they didn't understand that it was god's intentions for us to be prepared better to be better, to look in future with faith, uh, we could attract everything that God has hidden for us. It is time when we need to say, Lord, you promised and your promises will come true. Lord, I believe, I believe that you promised that this church will live. This church will live and in our faith, we won't run, we won't die, we won't run, we won't die. We will move forward and everything will be okay. It is time when you say, you, you can say that I have a lot of enemies, I have a lot of circumstances, but God will make you free. It is time when you can say, Oh Lord, if even I go through all that uh, uh, difficulties, my Lord is with me. My Lord is with our church. Lord is with this church. And all that enemies that on the right, enemies on the left, but you are with us. You're moving with us. My Lord is with me. So when we proclaim the war against our enemies, it is time when we need to look at that reward that is coming. It is time to open up our eyes and to see opportunities that God has prepared for us. It is time when we need to practice peace of God. It is written that peace will be for you. So your peace that, that is in your heart, it is the prediction of, uh, of uh, victory. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for honor to be a part of your sufferings. Thank you, Lord, for great rewards. Thank you for great opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for greatness. Thank you for that great influence of this church. Be glorified. Be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't it strange? Isn't it strange that during 15 years, during 18 years, we were working 
but during last three years, they were the uh, most difficult persecutions that we that we had, and we had we have much more influence. Isn't it tasty to have enemies? Thanks to God for all these enemies. And at the end, I remembered one uh, one sister had pro had prophets at the beginning of our church. She said that Lord is speaking that I will do so much through this church. I will raise you up. And um, and I'm spreading among you, and you will be pressed. Why? Because I want to make you uh, without fear. Listen, for us to reach what God has for us as a church, we need uh, not to have any fear. It is an example that Pastor shows us.